doing is these are uh, cranberry bogs that are being flooded for harvest. And so uh, this is just a, uh, a pond he uses to have a volume of water to be able to pump out. And he's pumping it with a tractor right here. That's a pump. And he's flooding the bogs. And, and uh, what they do is they get the water above the plants. And we'll go a little further down and you'll see what they look like when they're not flooded. Um, the, the flagging indicates where the ditches are. So when they come out with their machinery to get the berries, they don't fall in the ditches that are now underwater. Okay? All right, so. So, um, and what they'll do is they come out with these machines that have beaters. It almost looks like a paddle wheel on a boat. And they'll drive them back and forth on here and it shakes the berry, the bushes up and the berries all float to the surface. Then they use booms and they bring them all to one place and they suck them into a truck. <laughs> so here's cranberries. Anybody? I, I wouldn't, um, like any fruit, you might want to wash it before you ate it. Plus, a raw cranberry is a thing to remember. <laughs> Like we always say, have a few cranberries with your sugar. <laughs> it's a little bit like rhubarb, you know, it's like incredibly bitter, very high in vitamin C. Um, so uh, the way that cranberry production works is usually they try to find low spots where they have access to a lot of water. The word bog is a misnomer. You'll see it a little bit later. The plants actually don't like wet soil. They like moist soil, but they don't like wet soil. And so um, they like to be uh, really close to the water. This is, we've got quite a crowd coming in today. and. Um, uh, what they do is they uh, they they have the plants. They're they're a, a plant that um, you know it's monoculture like any other agriculture, and they grow the they grow the berries. They irrigate them like you would any other crop, and then they either harvest them with what they call a dry harvest, which is machines that actually can rake up the berries, you know, or they use wet harvest like this. And this is sort of the traditional method. That these bogs were put in in the 1800s. All right. It was a valley. You can see the valley continues up the, across the road. It's just a wetland up there. They came into these wetland areas and they manipulated the land surface and made agricultural fields out of them. And um, they can control the water levels to cause uh, flooding to, to uh, harvest the berries. Um, the other interesting thing is uh, you notice there's always sand piles all around cranberry bogs and you wonder what that's for. Well, cranberries, like any other berry plant, uh, how many of you have ever grown strawberries? You know that after a while you got to put in new plants because they, their productivity drops dramatically. Cranberries are the same way. So what they do is cranberries evolved in the dunes. They like to be buried by sand. It gives them a competitive advantage. So what they do is they, they will come out every three or four years and lay a layer of sand on the bogs so you don't see any plants and then new shoots come up and now you have good berries for a while. So that one of the parts of the, of the culture of cranberries is to bury them with sand periodically. So this combination of availability of water and then having sand around is, is critical to cranberry production. Right. Now we're at the very southern end of the Ashumit Valley plume, which is the plume that starts up at the sewage treatment plant and the fire training area. I don't know how many of you bothered to bring a handout out. Let me just take a quick look. If you look at page 18, that's a larger scale map of the whole area. Here's the pond where we did all of our, we were before. Here's the Ashumit Valley plume that's defined on the basis of volatile organic compounds. The military doesn't care that much about the nitrate that's out here or anything else, except for the phosphorus in the lake. They're more worried about the volatile organic compounds, the VOCs. And they, they've known for many years that elevated levels of TCE and PCE are present in this area underneath the valley. And we've always predicted that the groundwater discharge would take place up into here at some point. Well, it turns out they're beginning to see the volatiles now show up in the surface waters in this, this, this bog system and in the shallow groundwaters. So um, they asked the USGS to get involved in this this summer uh, for a number of reasons. And so we came out here uh, in June and July and we sampled extensively the surface waters in these bogs. When we get down a little further, it'll make a little bit more sense to you. We'll probably have, eh, we don't really have time. We'll, 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 we'll cut across the bogs on, one of the, on, on the drive and you can look on both sides and see the bogs when they're not flooded. We sample the surface waters and what we discovered is from top to bottom solvents at low concentrations in the surface waters. And that's the plume discharging up into the river. Right? So the berries clearly were being exposed to the solvents. And then there's irrigation wells. There's one over there. There's another one down the road a bit. They were also pumping the plume as well. So he was irrigating the bogs with the solvents. On page 14 you actually see the whole bog system and the concentrations that we were seeing in the surface waters. Below drinking water standards, but still detectable. 
Um, so then we went out with a little drill rig and um, at a bunch of locations that you see on page 20, if you have your hand out, there's triangles. See the little triangles on this map? There, uh, There's several sections of three of them across the bogs and then a number of others. One of those sites is right actually right in the middle of this berm right here. We actually went out with a little drill rig and did profiles with depth to try to find the plume under the bogs. Okay, looking for where this plume is that's discharging into the bogs. And um, if you look at the last page in your handout, it shows you the profiles we got at one of the sections. It's really kind of classic, classic hydrogeology. Okay, on the, it isn't at this location because I can't take you down there, unfortunately, but it's right next to that pump house over there. On the left side of the bog, right on the edge of the ditches. So right above where that tractor is, but on that side of the bog. And on the right side of the bog are the two profiles on the left and the right. What we found was 40 or 50 feet of clean water right up to the edge of the bogs, and then the plume at depth. And that matches where we see it in the uplands. When we drilled right in, the, we took a little rig right in the middle of the bogs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go right in here, am I? <laughs> right in the middle of the bogs, we found the plume top to bottom. See the profile here? We have solvents top to bottom. You see that? Okay. Just imagine uh, what's going on here. I'll let you hold that. Uh, the contaminant plume is coming from the north, and it's overlain by clean water. Remember how I showed you how? But now it's had miles to have that water accumulate on it. So there's 50, 60 feet of water that's clean above it. And then you have this zone at depth that contains the solvents. And we, in fact, map that at about the same elevation everywhere we look to the east and west of here. Right? As this approaches the, the beginning of the bog system, it's flooded right now, it's too bad, but there's actually a, you know, there's a channel right here that's quite deep. It's actually the river. This is the beginning of the headwaters of the Bacchus River. It's a, the mighty Bacchus, okay? <laughs> Flowing right here, and it picks up water as it goes down the bogs because it's groundwater discharge. So this groundwater is coming at the bogs from the north, and there's, a, there's essentially a drain at the top. And the water's gonna leave through the drain. So the groundwater begins to flow up and discharge into this drain. Does that make sense? So it begins to scavenge that clean water off the top first and then gradually flow up into the drain. And when you go a little bit further downstream and drill right in the middle of the bogs, all the clean water off the top's been taken off and you're actually drilling through these flow lines that are turning upwards. And that's why we see solvents top to bottom in the middle of the bogs. On the edges, it's not. On the edges, there's, you know, we don't see that. But the, So the plume shape is actually like this. Does that make sense to you guys? Beautiful red tail hawk, too. See the hawk? Look at the hawk. Come on, that track? Yeah. So, these guys follow you around, don't they? So, does that make sense to you guys? I know it's kind of a quick, quick and dirty, but does that make sense what's going on? Thanks. back up and we're going to cross over the bogs and when we cross over hopefully they won't be flooded and you'll see what the bogs really look like and you'll we'll slow down when you go over the main channel and you'll see the river coming through and that river ultimately dumps into the ocean into one of the harbors uh, just to let you know the reason why these other guys are here this truck just pulled up that's ch2m hill big consulting company they're the main contractors to the base um, i was at a meeting uh, a week and a half ago and the agreement is They've sampled the berries just before they started the harvest, for the, and they're going to sample them and measure them for volatile organics. They're going to sample them today and probably over the next week during the harvest. And they're going to sample them at Ocean Spray when they arrive at the plant, and then they're going to determine whether or not they, Ocean Spray will accept the berries from this bog for use or not, or they're going to dispose of them. 